Borosil Glassworks is undergoing a restructuring exercise. One of the country's largest glassware makers is looking to hive off its consumer business and leave the scientific glassware arm in the listed entity. Joining us now to explain the structure and the rationale is the MD and CEO, Shrivar Kheruka. Shrivar, good having you. Thanks much for joining in. Um, good morning to you, Neeraj here. Uh, can you tell us uh, the latest on the restructuring? I'm, I'm sure you've given out the rationale, but good if you can recount that again and the timelines for the same. So actually, this uh, has been going on for the last year and a half where we proposed this, and now it's been approved by the, all the relevant authorities. Uh, the, what we're doing is uh, we are converting our consumer and scientific products company uh, into a company called Borussia Limited. Uh, so th that, that's a, that will be listed in the next uh, six to eight weeks. And the solar business will uh, come into a company called Borussia Renewables Limited. Uh, the idea behind uh, this restructuring is to eliminate cross holdings that currently the companies have uh, to reduce uh, related party transactions and then also to give enhanced shareholder value by giving uh, shareholders opportunities to participate in either or both of the businesses independently. So we believe that uh, in the, this whole process should be through in the next say eight weeks uh, by end of April. And at the end of the process, there will be two listed companies. One is called Borosil Limited, which will house the consumer products and the scientific products business. And the other will be Borosil Renewables Limited, which will house the solar glass business of, uh, of the group. Okay. So but you got the approval. By when would uh, this officially be consummated? So, well, actually, the uh, approval has been received, uh, like you said already. Uh, the actually the actions already done everything that had to be done is already done the only thing which is pending to be done uh, we have a second record date where some shareholders of one of the companies will get shares of the uh, other company which will happen i think i believe on 9th of march and then uh, subsequent to that uh, there will be a listing of borussia limited which will take another six uh, to eight weeks like i said so everything should be consummated by end of april as per uh, the timelines although i would like to say that Everything's not in our control. There are regulatory authorities involved, so it does take, uh, you know, its own time as as for the norms. Yeah, but as things stand, you presume in your own wisdom that by end of April things should get consummated. Fair call. Now let's talk about the businesses. How I mean, you can start with either of the businesses and tell us how do you expect, uh, what do you see in the current scenario, and how do you expect the scenario to to move over the course of the next uh, say couple of years? Well, so if I talk about Borussia Limited. Which, is our, which will now house the consumer products and scientific products business. That's the company that I'm the managing director of. Um, that company has had very good growth. Uh, those two divisions have had very good growth in the uh, past few years. There is a general shift in the market for consumer. We, we do mainly kitchen and table products uh, made from glass and steel. And there has been a general shift in the market away from plastic. Uh, which has given us a strong tailwind. We expect that to continue. We expect uh, the new products that we have been launching, both from a design perspective as well as from a you know value for money perspective, uh, to continue delivering high you know growth because customers increasingly entertain at home. Uh, you know people want to call friends over. They want to have a you know show their kitchen. Show, you know uh, deliver products or their food in, in good cutlery. So I think. There are a lot of tailwinds uh, which favor the growth of our consumer products uh, business. Uh, as far as the scientific products business is concerned, uh, we are India's leading uh, uh, supplier to laboratories. We've recently acquired a business which does uh, packaging, pharmaceutical packaging for, uh, you know, for uh, injectable drugs. And Mr. Handa was just on the show. He's, oh, he's actually one of our board members. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's also been advising us, uh, helping us, uh, you know, uh, uh, you get into new customer segments, and I think that's been uh, that's been quite uh, helpful for us. And we've seen good growth there, although the growth will not be as as high as the consumer business. So, is it a higher margin uh, business because of the specialized nature? Yes. So, there's a uh, the value addition in scientific is higher, uh, specialized nature, like you mentioned. It's also uh, the fact that uh, the in a consumer business there are many unorganized players. Uh, so therefore, automatically the you know margins are a little bit lower. Uh, but on the scientific side, uh, the, the vendor identification and the selection process for a pharma company is much longer. 
So therefore, the vendors that are established that have uh, certain norms, which are GMP, uh, you know, ISO norms, which are required, not very many vendors can pass it. So therefore, that naturally allows us to have slightly higher margins on the, on the scientific side compared to consumer. Would you would you be amongst the top companies in this in this scientific wear business? Uh, and what's the market share, if I can loosely use that term? So on the scientific side, uh, we have uh, you know two different verticals. We have laboratory equipment, mainly glassware. In that, we are the market leader. We have about 65 odd percent share in laboratory glassware. Whereas on the, we have the pharma packaging, which I mentioned was for injectable drug packaging. There, there's another organization which is the market leader. Uh, we would be either number two or number three, and that may vary from year to year in, in that segment. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the high margin, high growth consumer wear business, uh, Shrivar. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a business which, is, which doesn't have a moat. I mean, there's no entry barrier, and I, I, I myself have seen a bunch of uh, imported goods um, yeah. having an impact. Now, because, I mean, I'm just, first, for the immediate term, this whole coronavirus issue that is um, nearly rabid China, is it actually having a favorable impact for that industry in the near term? Because the Chinese imports, I reckon, would be off limits right now. So I'll address the issue of the moat that you asked first, and then I'll come to coronavirus. Uh, as far as the moat is concerned, see, we have a very strong brand and a distribution channel. As there's more and more clutter in the market, I think people tend to buy what they know, because uh, what keep in mind that the products we supply have uh, a price point starting from 200 rupees to maybe 2,000 rupees. These are not very high involvement categories where people are doing a lot of research before buying. They will go uh, by default to a brand that they know, that they trust, uh, for design that they like. And I believe that we, that itself is the moat, our brand, our distribution channel, and our ability to launch uh, new products which are well designed. Our tagline is performs beautifully. And uh, our products are performance oriented and they're also very aesthetically pleasing to look at and to use. So therefore, uh, we believe that by spending money on advertising, uh, sales promotion, as well as uh, by spending uh, you know, money on our distribution, we, we create a moat uh, around the business. And uh, that's evident from our growth over the last few years. I think maybe four or five years ago, our consumer business was less than 100 crores. This year, you know, I think we'll cross more than 400 crores of uh, you know, revenue on the con just on the consumer side. So e even then, we are very small. We're just scratching the surface of uh, the demand possibilities uh, in, on that uh, space. So I think the moat is being created as we speak, and uh, every year the moat becomes wider and deeper. As far as Corona is concerned, uh, yes, we do. Ha we so look. We have manufacturing in India, which will be benefited, frankly, from uh, the impact of any disruption in the supply chain from China. Um, but as far as our own imports from China are concerned, we generally have inventory which uh, can suffice us for a period of time. We do have a, a very strong risk management policy in the organization, which allows us or which has made us uh, do alternate sourcing. So we've always had two sources for our main products. So uh, we could diversify away. And when I say two sources, I don't mean both are in China. There's also sourcing from Europe, uh, from Southeast Asia, from the US. So uh, we have the ability to diversify away from China. Uh, obviously, there will be some short term impact. Uh, but I do not think uh, that this is going to be a long term uh, you know, issue. Maybe it's a quarter or two where you may have some disruption. OK. Fair call. Shivar, one final question then. You've grown from whatever number you said, 100 crores a few years ago to 400 crores on top line on the consumer business in the current year. What's the run rate that you anticipate in the consumer business, say, over the next three or four or five years? Because I heard you mention that you're just scratching the bottom of the surface right now. Yeah. So. Uh, frankly, I think the guidance that we've uh, always been maintaining is to maintain a CAGR of 15 to 20 percent, although obviously the last few years the CAGR has been higher. Uh, but 15 to 20 percent, when I look at, I don't look at year-on-year -year numbers, but uh, if I look at, say, a medium-term three to five-year horizon, uh, could we double in, the, in that horizon? I think we should maybe, can we do better? I think we could do better, but uh, at the moment we would be targeting uh, somewhere like that, doubling in three to four years' time. Doubling in three to four years' time. Well, we wish you all the best for that, Shrivar. Uh, and um, thanks so much for speaking to us today and giving us the details of uh, uh, the corporate action as well. Thank you so much.
Uh, that's the view from Borosil. The, the consumer business has grown well. The laboratory business um, they expect it to remain steady. And the entire uh, process uh, of the two companies getting listed, I think if I'm not wrong, he said will get consummated by the end of April.